What's going on, guys? My name is Dillard, bringing you back another spicy meat to ball podcast. This is episode number five. Without wasting any more time, let's dive right into it. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and break down the last two games of the series against the Rays. So the second game of the series, we ended up dropping that game, losing 7-2 to two with the Yankees. Total hitting statistics came out with a total of 29 at-bats, two runs scored, five hits, two RBIs, one walk, and six times that our batter struck out. For all the other batting statistics, we had a total of two doubles, which Frazier recorded one and Torres recorded one as well. We had one home run, at least for the Yankees portion, with that only home run being hit by DJ in the sixth inning, which happens to be his second home run on the year. And he is not a product of Coors Field. Let me know he is an absolute tank, multi-hitting game machine. Keeps doing it over and over again. Also, for the RBIs, DJ and both Frazier recorded one apiece. And with runners in scoring position, we had a low one out of five. Now, for the pitching side, we had three different pitchers. We had Sabathia, we had Holder, and we had Cortez, which was making his major league debut. So the pitching was not that great. For the pitching, we had eight innings pitch. We gave up ten hits. Uh, we gave up seven runs, seven earned runs. We walked five batters, struck out six batters, and gave up three home runs. Our pitchers had a combined total pitch count of 147. And out of 147 of those total pitches were 97 of them were called strikes. So we ended up losing the game, dropping, making a dead even series between one and one, you know, dead even 500, whatever you want to call it, one to one tie series. But we ended up giving up this game 7-2, which ended up dropping our record to 23 and 16. And it improved the Rays record to 21 and or not 21 and 14, 24 and 14, excuse me with a 12 and nine home record. And now the Yankees ended up dropping their away record to 10 and seven. But even though we lost this game, we had a chance to come back in the next game, very strong. I'm not really gonna go too much into this because like I said, we ended up dropping the game. We lost seven to two. There really wasn't too much that happened other than DJ LeMayu's home run. He just keeps on coming. He's the gift that keeps on giving, just keeps on producing. So other than that, not really too much happened in this game. But for the next game, really important game, because as you guys know, we won the first series against Tyler Glass now. We also ended up winning the third game of the series to Mr. Drumroll Please, Blake Snell. So we weren't only able to beat Glass now, but we were able to beat Snell as well, which is very important because as you guys know, these are some of the most dominant pitchers you will ever face. And that's just facts, everyone knows that. So this game was incredible. We ended up winning the game 7-1. to one. And it's crazy because until the fifth inning, it seemed like this was going to be a game that was decided by one run. And not just one run, but it seemed like one of the teams was going to get shut out and the other was going to score one run. Because the pitching from not only the Tampa Bay Rays side, but the Yankees side was incredible. It was an absolute pitching duel between Snell and Tanaka. One of the best pitching duels I've seen so far this year and one of my favorite pitching games I've seen so far in my entire existence. Like this was a heck of a game. If you did watch this game and definitely if you're a big fan of baseball, you were definitely in a treat because this, if it was, you know, one of those things that you love, if you love pitching, this would have been your absolute Haven like this would have been heaven in disguise because this was a heck of a battle between Tanaka and Snell But fortunately Snell ended up losing that drops his record to three and four Which is just insane because he hardly lost anything last year He hardly lost any games last year as a Cy Young award. He was absolutely incredible. He's still incredible this year Don't get me wrong. It's I just it's crazy to me that he's three and four That's just insane and most of those losses are from Kansas City, which is insane because you think of Kansas City and you're like Blake Snell playing Kansas City nothing against the Royals but you think Snell would dominate that team right you think only a few teams that Snell may have a difficult time with you know big hitting cores like maybe the Astros uh maybe the you know the Red Sox the Red Sox have been very red hot the Yankees obviously in this case you know but you don't really picture the Royals being a team that gives him a hard time but you know that's just how the season's been he's still a beast though don't get me wrong not one of those pitchers I'd want to face. He was striking out a lot of people. Until the fifth inning, he was pretty comfortable through the first four innings. He had a total of 12 strikeouts, which is a lot of strikeouts, which the bad thing about getting that many strikeouts is it works your pitch count up, but he still 
was throwing those fastballs and they were going right by our batters. Even if he threw it down the middle of the pipe, an absolute meatball, none of our hitters could hit it. It was a very difficult time for us until the fifth inning, fifth inning where we started a little mini rally, which ended up scoring two runs, and the rally ended up starting with Mr. Austin Romine. Not only that, but next was Talkman, who ended up scoring the first run of the game with a double. And let's go ahead and just get into all the other batting statistics. So for the whole game in general, we had 34 at-bats, 7 runs scored, 9 hits, 6 RBIs, 5 walks. And unfortunately, we struck out 17 times, which is not great. But the fact that we still put up 7 runs and won the game 7-1... to one, I honestly don't even care that much that we struck out 17 times because we were still able to produce seven runs, which is excellent in my mind. And the fact that we only limited the Rays, a dangerous offensive team, a team not to be reckoned with. Yeah, the fact that we held them to one run and almost shut them out, that's amazing. That's freaking awesome. And that only run happened to be from Austin Meadows, which was a home run. And everyone knows Meadows has been an absolute beast. Like he's an absolute beast of a hitter and a dangerous guy and you always have to watch out for him because he will make you pay if you throw the wrong pitch to him and he did make Mr. Tanaka pay but luckily Tanaka didn't let that get to him Tanaka ended up finishing with a total of seven strong innings giving up five hits one run one earned run zero walks he struck out seven batters and gave up one home run with a total of 73 pitches and 53 or not 53 sorry 55 of those pitches were called strikes Tanaka now has a 3.44 ERA. So Tanaka, this was one of Tanaka's best games I've ever seen him pitch. You couldn't ask for a better pitching performance from Tanaka considering he was going up against Blake Snell. And he knew, he knew before this game started that he was going to have to limit the damage to a minimum or there was no chance that we were going to win. And I'm pretty sure nobody predicted Mr. Blake Snell was going to be pulled out as early as he was. But it is what it is. Things happen. Now, like I said, Tanaka, he couldn't have pitched any better. Then we also had Britton. He only gave up two hits. He had two strikeouts. Got us out of a jam. Awesome job, Britton. He did excellent. Then the story. The big story of the entire game. Mr. Chad Green. Everyone knows his ERA is through the roof. He's been struggling a lot. There was that one game where we could have possibly lost to the Angels because he gave up a grand slam to Justin Bauer. Yeah, or not Justin Bauer, Justin Bohr. My apologies for butchering his name. But the point is, Chad Green has been not the best pitcher lately. He's been giving up a lot of runs, and a lot of times people have been very wary on trusting him. But he came back in this pitching in the ninth inning with beautiful pitching coming back just through the ninth inning. He threw 12 total pitches with nine of those pitches being called strikes, and he had three strikeouts. One, two, three. He went one, two, three. All three of the batters he faced to close out the game and give the Yankees a win with three strikeouts. You cannot ask for a more stronger comeback, especially from a guy whose ERA was at least 16.0. With this game, now he's lowered his ERA to a 14.54, which is still extremely high. Don't get me wrong. But coming back when you've been struggling all that time, you go back to the minors, you work on your mechanics and your fundamentals, you come back with the confidence, and you strike out three batters in a row. And this isn't like a cheap team. And no offense to these teams, because they're still all Major League Baseball teams. So anyone who's a Major League player can still make you pay. You know, anyone can do big things in this league. But, you know, teams like the Orioles or teams like the Royals, you know, teams that have been struggling, you know, I can understand how Chad Green could get three Ks in a row. But no, Chad Green did it against the freaking Tampa Bay Rays, one of the best teams in baseball, without a doubt, struck out the first three batters to end the game. You cannot ask much more of a comeback. And, you know, I don't want to jinx it, but I really am hoping. I am so hoping to the Lord. I am just praying to the baseball gods that Chad Green is back. And that he is back just like how he was his previous years where he was a dominant relief pitcher for us. And I'm just, I was so excited. That was honestly, obviously a lot of the stuff concerning the batting and all the stuff that we were producing. You know, seven runs is obviously very exciting. I get that. But 
you know, Chad Green's just been struggling and struggling. He comes back and strong against a very strong team, a team that he knew that he needed to shut them out. I mean, we did have a 7-1 lead, but, you know, a lot of people were still, like, holding their breath, like, oh, is Chad Green going to make this uh, save opportunity and stuff, even though we had a six-point or a six-point, six-run lead. <laughs> Sorry. A lot of you are going to get really, really upset with me that I said points. I know my baseball luggage. I swear, I did not mean to say points. I think I'm getting mixed up with baseball. Not baseball, sorry. I think I'm getting mixed up with basketball because I do kind of want to talk about a little basketball with the playoffs a little near the end of the podcast. So that's why I was thinking about I was thinking of the incident with the Toronto Raptors and the 76ers last night. Absolutely insane game, but we'll get that to that later. But... Like I said, Chad Green, absolutely outstanding. For the hitting, because I didn't really mention all the hitting. So Romine, he had a double. Yershela had a double. And Talkman had a double as well. Estrada had the only home run for at least the Yankees. Because Austin Meadows was actually the only one who had a home run for the Tampa Bay Rays. But Estrada had a home run in the ninth inning, which was his second ding-dong of his MLB career, which is amazing. I love this kid. He's definitely going to, at least I hope, show glimpses of becoming a really great player and someone that we can rely on in the future just in case things go south. Obviously, they've been going really south the last month. Not for our record, because we've been playing really well lately, but as far as the injuries are concerned, you guys know the team went south real quickly. We had a very, 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 very hard uh, first few weeks, that's for sure. It was very, very painful going through a lot of the first few weeks in the month of April. But... Anyways, Strada had his second ever home run. Gardner recorded an RBI. So did DJ. Yershela recorded two RBIs. And Talkman and Estrada both recorded one RBI. And one of those RBIs from Gardner was actually a sacrifice fly. And DJ is also responsible for a sacrifice hit. And for the final hitting stat, with runners in scoring position, we were three out of 11, which is still not that great. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We scored seven runs. Uh, this kid, Mr. Gio Yershela. It seems like every time we have men on men on base that are in scoring position, Gio Yershela gets them home. Every time. This man, I, I'm just at this point, like it's so hard deciding if I want a Gio Yershela jersey or a DJ. Because DJ, he's, he just keeps staying clutch. DJ just keeps getting multi-hit games after multi-hit games. He's just outstanding. And then Yershela. Yershela had four strikeouts. Yes, I understand that. That's not great. But he still came up clutch and gave us two runs, which is crazy. Which, I mean, you can't ask much more than that, guys. I mean, it just seems like every time Gio steps to the plate, he gets these runners in every time. Like, I honestly don't know what his runners and scoring position stats are, but I'd really like to know. That's something I definitely need to check on because they got to be super high. Like, there's no way they're not super high because it seems like every time we have runners in scoring position, he gets them home. He keeps doing it, he keeps doing it, and DJ keeps doing it, and they're both incredible, and I love both of them. And I'm still having a fight with an angel and a devil inside of my head determining which jersey I'm going to get because eventually I will probably get both of them. But, you know, jerseys are like 120 110 bucks, not the most cheapest thing in the world, so I got to kind of hold myself. And it's also worth the mention that both Talkman and Romine had really good days too. Both of them had a total of four at-bats. They both had two hits. They both had two runs scored. And Talkman had one RBI. So, you know, you really can't ask much more. They they produced. They did really well. Especially Talkman. I loved when Talkman had that first double to score Romine. And he was just so pumped. He was like, yeah, let's go. Like, like that's the type of motivation I love. Like, I know Talkman hasn't been exactly the best. But, you know, him and Tyler Wade, just how they're just so positive in the clubhouse and the, the emotions that they let out, I just love it. I can't help but love them just for that. Like, that's awesome. That really gets your team on their feet and ready to go. And, you know, you really can't ask much more. So, we actually scored two runs in the fifth inning, one run in the eighth inning, and four runs in the ninth inning. So, we had a huge rally in the ninth inning with four runs. Not like huge, huge, but you guys get what I mean. Pretty good. Four runs is definitely great for the ninth inning. And it's also worth the mention. Now, if anyone knows a stat on this, please let me know because I really want to know a stat on this. 
But what ended up happening before the ninth inning started was there was actually a blackout at the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, it's kind of funny because a lot of people, including myself, I tweeted. I was like, did you guys pay the electric bill? Because, like I said, there was a blackout at the Rays Stadium. But this isn't the first time. They've had many problems with lights going out. And, you know, they also have issues with the catwalk and all that stuff. Just makes the stadium really, really ridiculous. But it would still be like... It would still be like a really cool stadium to go to. I think any stadium would be really cool to go to. But I do want to know if anyone, like I said, knows a stat on how many times that stadium has had a blackout. Please let me know. Because I really want to know. Because it seems like they're always constantly having blackouts. Apparently they don't pay their electric bill or apparently the electricity goes out. I don't know what the heck's going on. But they always seem to have blackouts in their stadium. But anyways, what's kind of funny about the blackout though is literally immediately because it was about a 45 minute wait trying to get the power back on or trying to get the lights back on there was people even using their phones apparently for flashlights to light up the stadium and at that point i'm just like okay folks i've heard it all like that is freaking hilarious if you don't laugh at that i don't think you have a soul because that's just crazy that's funny to me but uh it was really funny because we had about a four like i said 45 minute break just waiting for the game to come back on and it comes back on in the top of the ninth inning. And Estrada almost immediately dongs a freaking long home run to right field. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Here we go. I guess the light, the blackout ended up helping us in our favor, which we were already winning. But then, you know, we poured on another run and another run and another run to make it four in the top ninth inning. And just an excellent inning. And then Chad Green, you guys know, like I said earlier, and I just kept saying it because he just really made me proud. Like, I am so happy with how he came out with that amazing comeback with three strikeouts, three down to end the game. Absolutely amazing. So, other than that, because we feel like, at least I feel like we've been talking about quite a bit already. We're at like 17 minutes, I think, so far. So, here's some other things that I would like to talk about. So, this video, I'm going to try to up, this video should definitely be uploaded before the Orioles game tonight because it's... 513. That's when I'm recording it. I just got off work, so that's why I haven't been able to post this game and or post this video until now. And I'm actually going to post a separate Rays versus Yankees breakdown video later. I'm going off topic. But my point is, this is going to be for today's game. Now, Aaron Hicks is returning, and I didn't see Talkman on the roster, so I am assuming that they sent Mike Talkman to triple A but I'm not 110% on that, so definitely let me know. Check my sources. We also have put Mr. Jonathan Lasagna or Jonathan Luis Siga on the 10-day IL, retroactive to 510 with a right shoulder strain. So I'm still really not concerned about that and not really sure um, how that's going to go down because I just briefly looked at it, but it's just some news I think I ought to let you guys know. But I think Jonathan will be okay. And then we also recalled right-handed pitcher Chance Adams, number 35 from the Rail Riders. So we'll definitely see how that goes. Hope to see some great things out of him. So other than that, I would like to mention just again, I'm going to keep talking about Gio because he's absolutely a freak. He's absolutely a monster in the flesh. Since April 20th, for his last 21st games, 21st games, 21 games that he has played, he has an average of 373. Two home runs, extra base hits with eight, 13 RBIs, eight runs, and a slugging of 552, which is absolutely fire. Geo just keeps grinding it, and the kid is amazing. We got to keep him. He's absolutely essential for this roster. Now, another thing I'd like to mention. In the last eight series, the Yankees are 18-7, and seven, going 2-0 and oh against Boston, 3-1 and one against KC, 3-1 and one against the Angels, swept this Giants 3-0, Lost to the Diamondbacks, unfortunately, 0-2, to two, but it's not that big of a deal because it is NL, and we had to abide by NL rules, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it is what it is. You can't do really anything about it. Minnesota were 2-1, and one. Seattle 3-1, and one, and Tampa Bay 2-1. and one. So that means we've won seven out of our last eight series. It's also worth the mention that in 2017, we started – the month or just started the series the season in general sorry not the month of the series but the season in general for 2017 with 24 wins and 16 losses 
2018, we started the whole new year with 28 wins and 12 losses. This year, we started with 24 wins and 16 losses. So the same amount of wins and losses that we had in 2017 at this exact moment in time is the same amount of wins and losses we have in 2019. And you guys know what happened in 2017, right? <sighs> that is a very, very, very bad nightmare in my memory. We were winning the series against Houston, three to two, go in Houston, and we lose two in a row. We were so close from a World Series, and I honestly feel like that if we would have went to the World Series, we would have beat the Dodgers. Because if we beat the Astros, there's no excuse for us not beating the Dodgers. So we were that close, but the point is, it's good news. We have an amazing record, and especially with the team that we have, you know, now we finally have Hicks back, but we still don't got the guys, the likes of, you know, such as Sevy, Batances, Judge, Stanton, you know, we still don't have a lot of guys, DD and other guys, Ben Heller, you know, there's still a lot of pieces missing. And Montgomery, and you guys get the point, all the other guys that are injured on the IL right now. And another thing I'd like to mention, and this is just kind of my personal opinion. So this is how I personally think the roster should be, or how I think it's going to be. So I think Hicks is going to be in center field now. Sanchez is going to be the dominant catcher. Torres is going to be the shortstop until DD gets back. Voigt is going to be the primary first baseman. DJ is going to be the primary second baseman. And Duhar is going to be the DH for now. Unfortunately, D or not DH. Unfortunately, and Duhar has been struggling quite a bit lately, so I'm not sure how much more time they're going to give him. But me as a fan, I think he's going to break out soon. At least I really hope he does. I still have the faith in him. But anyways, Frazier, I think, will be in right field for now. Yershella will be at third pace. That's got to happen. DJ and Yershella, they got to be on. They got to be in the infield. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, period. They have to be playing infield positions. Yershella's got to play third. And DJ, DJ can play anything. He can play third. He can play first. He can play second. He can play shortstop. He can play anything. We, we know this. DJ is not just a crazy clutch hitter. And he's not just a natural-born hitter but he's also a natural born fielder. He's outstanding. And for the last position, I would say Gardy and Mabin will be switching off in left field until Stanton gets back because a lot of people don't give Stanton credit that he deserves, especially when he was with Miami for a lot of the outfielding that he used to do. And I really feel like Stanton should be playing left field as much as possible because he's an amazing left fielder and people don't give him enough credit for it. So that's pretty much it about the Yankees. There's three other more things I want to go over real quickly. It's not going to take me that long and then we'll be done with this podcast, unfortunately. But, you know, I can't do podcasts. At least I don't want to do them for like an hour plus. I think that's too long. Try to limit it to it to like, you know, 25, 20 minutes to like 40, maybe 45 minutes max. But anyways, so yesterday, these are three things that I would like to point out. Mr. George Springer went absolutely off against the Rangers on Mother's Day. He was five for five with five runs, four RBIs, and two homers. He absolutely killed it. George Springer is an absolute monster, one of the best leadoff in the majors. Really fun guy to watch. Not a fun guy if you're playing against him. The second thing. Michael, Sh My Michael. Michael Chavez has the second most RBIs with 19 for a Red Sox player's first 20 games, trailing only Ted Williams and George Scott, who both had 20 RBIs. That's insane. That's crazy. I know that most of my subscribers are probably going to be Yankees fans, but I just can't deny this. Like, I love the Yankees, obviously, or I wouldn't do all these videos and I wouldn't work and bust my ass off to do the things that I want to do in life with that's associated with the Yankees. Hopefully I would do anything for any major league team in general, but the dream and the goal is to do something for the Yankees, but I just can't deny it. Like there's a lot of players that I love from the Red Sox. Like, and I just can't help it because I'm a fan of baseball in general. I can't hate on success. You know, I like JD Martinez. I like Xander Bogarts. I like Michael Chavez. He's been absolutely killing it. I love Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is actually my favorite right fielder. And is that's as far as Judge is not concerned. Just letting you guys know that. 
because, like I said, I'm not trying to be really biased and just be like, all my favorite players are the Yankees, which obviously I wouldn't own a Judge jersey if he wasn't my favorite player, which Judge is my favorite player. But as far as non-Yankees are concerned, Mookie Betts would have to be my favorite right fielder from both the AL and the NL, without a doubt. Kind of close with, uh, I really like Christian Yelich and I really like Cody Bellinger, but I'd still have to honestly say Mookie Betts. And then the last thing I would like to mention before I go ahead and cut this podcast, the Dodgers pitching last night was absolutely phenomenal against the Washington Walgreens. I call it the Washington Walgreens because if you look at their logo, if you guys know what a Walgreens is, it's like a pharmacy, kind of like a CVS if you know what that is. Their logo looks almost identical to the Walgreens logo. So there's a lot of times that I, I call them the Washington Walgreens, so that's why. But the Washington Nationals... They played them, and the Dodgers had a total of nine innings pitch. They gave up one hit in the entire game, so they shut out the Nats. They had zero runs, one walk, 10 strikeouts, 130 pitches total with 90 strikes. Dodgers, absolutely incredible pitching. They almost had a no-hitter. The team was almost going on a no-hitter, and I watched the game, and then... Oh, I know Dodgers fans were mad. I, I can feel your pain. I-, I would be mad too if the Yankees were playing someone and someone near the end of the game ended up getting a base hit, eliminating the possible chance of a no-hitter. But Dodgers only gave up one hit, shut out the Nats, and it was incredible. Oh, and yeah, I don't mean to boast, but I got to say this. I got to say this. Corey Seager, and you can go to my Twitter if you want to check. I'll actually put it down below. And if you want to go through like specific timestamps and stuff, you can. But right before Corey Seager came up to the plate, the bases were loaded for the Dodgers. And I said this, and I tweeted too, so you can go back. You can go to my Twitter and check this, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll even put it in the, in the description. If you, I was about to say subscription, but I will put this in the description and let you guys read it. But I literally predicted moments before that Corey Seager would hit a grand slam. And what does he do? Slams one to right field and deep. And the best thing about it wasn't just the fact that I predicted it, but if you go back and watch the grand slam, the fan who caught the ball caught it with his cap. Like he took his ball cap off and caught it with his freaking ball cap. And I was like, that's cool. That's freaking awesome. That guy is such a legend. But yeah, I don't know. I just got to have the boast about that. I kind of had to just say that at the end of the podcast because I was really proud of myself because I was like, he's going to hit a grand slam right here. And then whenever he did it, I quoted it. And I was like, ha, 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 because I was just like, <laughs> I mean, I was I was really proud of myself. I'm not going to lie. I don't mean to boast about it and I don't mean to flex about it, but it was pretty cool that I predicted it. But anyways, that's about it. For today's podcast i hope you guys did enjoy you guys are awesome i appreciate all the lovely the, i was about to say the lovely tweets i have appreciated all the lovely comments and i appreciate all the likes and the support it means a lot to me i'll keep grinding out these videos for you guys give you guys the best possible content i can but other than that make sure you do subscribe if you haven't already click that bell notification so you get notifications for every time i upload a video which is very nice and it helps me a lot and it helps you a lot hopefully that you're happy with all my videos that i upload also make sure you do like this video you comment let me know what you like what you didn't like let me know what i can do better if you guys want to chime in on a podcast i'm definitely down to do podcasts with people even if you're not yankees fans if you're a baseball fan in general let's do a podcast Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. See you guys later.